do Mogul Live. I'm James Pratt, part of the uh, the Mogul team. We've got a really great guest today that I want to uh, share with you. Dane Hallett's going to be joining us. And again, for anyone that wants to hear about concept art, also wants to hear about what the best in Hollywood are doing, Dane, is uh, he's got a really impressive resume. Really looking forward to having a chat with him when he jumps into the chat. And for anyone that's asking as well, what is Mogul? What is Mogul Productions? Jump onto the website, mogulproductions.com and you'll be able to get an idea, blockchain-based film financing, but also a uh, production company which is allowing, whether you're the fan, whether you're the investor, or even whether you're the industry artist, an opportunity to be able to connect. And I've just noticed that our guest himself, Dane Hallett, has just joined us, so I'm just gonna connect Dane now when he uh, jumps into the screen. And guys, I'm gonna run up Dane's resumes, Aquaman, Pirates of the Caribbean, He's just working on at the moment, he's working on the new Marvel film, Shang Chai and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Dane, great to have Hello. you. Hello. Hi, mate, how are you? Welcome to Mogul Live. Thanks very much, thanks for having me. Well, can you tell everyone that's uh, just joined in the chat, because we've got a really good group so far coming in. What are you working on at the moment? Uh, well, because of Corona, not much. Uh, a lot of stuff sort of been um, halted. I was on a Marvel production. The um, I can't look. I mean, Marvel don't like me talking about it, but it is on the internet. It is on IMDb that I was working on the uh, Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Um, but uh, that took a break. That got coroned, and then uh, you know. So there's only a. Yeah, there's a couple other bits and pieces that I'm working on that I can't really talk about, something from Warner Brothers, but yeah. <laughs> and I'll, I'll let the audience know as well, just very quickly, uh, speaking of Dane, hi Angela, hey John, thanks for joining. Uh, Dane may be getting a call from Warner Brothers at any minute, that may mean he has to exit the interview, but we're gonna, we're gonna push through as much as we can, is that right, Dane? Yes, that's right, man. <laughs> Everyone's sort of scrambling in Hollywood, you know, just to make sure things are going to work and go ahead. And so some projects are stalling, some projects are sort of secretly ticking away. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for the comment, Kevin. Get, get corona uh, Yeah, got corona yeah. <laughs> guys, as we're talking with Dane, anyone that's joined the chat, feel free to ask him any questions or if you've gone onto the Mogul website and you've got any questions about Mogul as well, feel free anytime, make this an interactive chat as well. And sort of, Dane, if you want to talk about anything too, I know you've got a lot of, hey, Kevin, good to see you as well. He's joined the chat. Uh, one of the things I think the audience would really like to hear from you is I'm going to roll off a couple of directors that you work very, very close with. Yep, sure. Just, just to give those people watching now kind of an idea of what their style is and what is the difference. So, I mean, sure. starting off with uh, you worked with, James Wan on the, the Aquaman films. Uh, mm -hmm. What's his style like compared to, say, Ridley Scott when you're working on these films? Um, you know, with James, I didn't get to... I wasn't on set while he was making any calls, but working directly with him, uh, he was such a nice dude, eh? Just so enthusiastic about the project, enthusiastic about what we're doing, open to ideas, uh, really wanted to collaborate. You know, and his demeanor was very, just very approachable. And uh, I saw him again at San Diego Comic Con. I was there signing my my book came out, um, and uh, I saw him there. And uh, yeah, he was he's just really nice. He was just great compared to Ridley Scott. He was he was really nice, but he was very very focused on what he wanted to get, and also. Uh, you know, we had a very specific mission. It was me and another great artist, Matt Hatton, were doing the, the charcoal drawings that feature in the film. And uh, the studies, the nature studies, the alien studies and all that sort of stuff. And so um, when we're dealing with Ridley, very, very specific instructions. But also he just wanted to talk about art. That's all he wanted to do. Like, you could just see that we, we could just get sidetracked and just start talking about Rembrandt or any one of these artists that we love, classic stuff. He's a, he's an artist. He is an artist. He did I think eight years in art school before he was doing film. So as an artist, man, it was awesome. He was excellent. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. There's a couple other directors I guess that you maybe want to know about. I, I can't think of any off the top of my head. George Miller, super uh, 
uh, I worked a couple of times with him. Um, very personable. He has a nickname, um, Uncle George, <laughs> because he's just very, um, I wouldn't say laid back, but just uh, super concerned with how to tell the story, super concerned with, um, you know, the quality of whatever's happening. I guess, you know, nine Academy Awards on his last effort, I guess it kind of speaks for itself. But yeah, he was a cool dude. Mel Gibson, I absolutely loved. Crazy, like totally crazy, uh, like uh, energy, you know? But... Um, and that, and that, was, uh, that was the film Hacksaw Ridge, wasn't it? That you worked with Mel? Yep, that's right, yeah. And he just had like a like a brutal energy that I loved, man. I loved <laughs> working with him. It's just such a drama, 100% about the drama of characters, man. Uh, beautiful, excellent. Yeah. Um, I can, geez, I, can I, keep I, going, I, I guess. I, I think some of the, uh, the audience here is really engaged with what you're saying. Again, um, you know, down the track working, we'd love to have you at Mogul doing any any work as well but i know andrew also asked a good question which was your book and i i haven't mentioned this to the audience i know about it but they don't but perhaps you could yep. talk a little bit about the the book because to kind of circle back just so everyone gets an idea dane's worked on films ridley scott with alien covenant um you know aquaman with james wan uh the new marvel film with with destin so he's kind of working closely with these directors, but the book is something different, isn't it? Yeah, well, the book was um, after Alien Covenant came out and, you know, regardless of how many people did or didn't like the film, the artwork in it got a bit of a reputation for being, you know, pretty, like a, like a pretty interesting feature of the film. And so we ended up putting a book together. Um, I contacted titan and basically hustled a book into existence which is just a, a collection of mine and matt's work um that's featured in the film and it sort of goes from one of the characters it sort of follows his dement into madness it's i think it's like a geez i think it's like a 500 page book so i mean it's it's out there if you google my name like it, it'll come up and um and you can see it. but it's basically just a collection of the artwork that we did and this is through 20th century fox it was at the time, yeah. I met with um, 20th Century Fox to get it happening, but then it also became very much a, the publisher experience as well. Like once they sort of okayed it, then we went to the publisher, and then uh, which is Titan Publishing, by the way. So we back and forth with Titan Publishing quite a bit, and uh, I ended up doing the cover for one of the new books coming out as well, um, for the, uh, celebrating the 40 years of Alien. I'm a massive Alien fan, for the record, as well. I don't, maybe the people on here, they just like films in general. I'm very much horror, science fiction. That's what I love. Which, which, is, a, which is a great segue to maybe talk a little bit about your film. So concept artist in Hollywood working in these tentpole films. Yeah. Uh, you also segued into, into directing last year. Yes. Which, talk about your film with Crypt TV. Um, so I have, you know, you know, being a, an artist in the film industry is really a means to an end. I, I just like making films and I want to make films forever, you know, predominantly. I just like things with teeth, you know, like a bit of attitude. And so I wanted to come out of the box swinging. I made a short film uh, called Ranker. And uh, so I wrote and directed it. And um, basically it's a, well, it's a very dark, visceral tale, as I suspect I'll only ever want to be telling stories like that. Um, and uh, it's about, well, look, it's, uh, look, what happened was I wrote the script and I showed it to a producer in LA who said, look, we've got this thing happening with Crypt TV, which is an online distribution platform. And uh, maybe we want to have a go with doing that instead of the usual festival route. I was a bit hesitant at first, but I absolutely love it. I think we've got about 100,000 100, views as of now. Um, and I get to connect with the audience directly. It's great. I, I was against it, and then my producer said, I, I said to him, I said, look, I just want to get this film in front of Jason Blum or Eli Roth, and then he sent me an email that outlined, it showed that Eli Roth is the CEO of Crypt TV, and uh, Jason Blum founded it. And I was like, oh, okay, all right, then we're going to do that. And so pretty, pretty we, well, we started line up, right? Oh, it was awesome. We're, we're supposed to be doing more stuff with them. It's just that I've had so much other work on I haven't had the chance to write scripts or... 
man, it's just been an absolutely crazy time. So, uh, yeah, but that's in the pipeline. It's, it's close to happening. But we can see your we can see uh, we can see your film online. Where can we see the film? You online? can you can see the short version of it. Um, there's a longer version, a director's cut that we're saving for festivals when festivals reopen. But uh, you can go, uh, you can Google Ranker short film and it'll, it'll come straight up. But that's one of the first ones that comes up. But uh, yeah, it's on YouTube, Ranker, Crypt TV, Ranker, Crypt TV, Dane Howard. You'll find you'll find it, and um, I'm pretty sure. Look, it depends on what kind of films you like, but um, I think there's something in it f for almost everyone. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you want to put yeah. it on the mogul, if you want to put it on the mogul platform for uh, our community, Andrew's made a really good point to get some more eyes on it. Um, you know, we'd love to showcase it. I I've seen it. And I think it's really well done. Like it's got some <laughs> Thanks, man. Academy Academy Award winners worked on it. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Um, I, you know, in the industry, I, I made some some academy award-winning connections they're just friends to me but they they do have a lot of a lot of talent man and and on my film i mean it, i'll just say it outright i think it looks spectacular it looks phenomenal it looks exactly like i imagined it probably better um and that's only because of the talent that i had on it you know i had yeah. odd studios adam johansson and and damien of odd studios they got an academy award for fury road and uh baftas and all these kinds of awards and they did the creatures on it um there's creatures in it uh and then i had uh i hate yeah there's a lot of talent there's a lot of talent that goes into making it look as good as it does yeah and so, was andrew yeah. was andrew mason one of the producers on that yeah look i guess he's an associate producer because i worked with him and i got on with him like crazy i don't know if anyone else out there knows who andrew mason is i knew of him from the matrix films when i was a teenager watching those movies i always wanted to work with this guy andrew and since then, my art has actually taken me into working with him on a couple of other projects. And uh, he helped me cast the film and gave me heaps of guidance. And I cannot wait to work with him again. Yeah. Lisa's just done a really good... Uh, and Kevin, thank Got a nice compliment from Kevin. I uh, really liked the poster. Um, oh, yeah. Yep. You drew that? Was that your artwork? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I put yeah. That together, yep. <laughs> Lisa just had a really good question for you. What goes through your mind when you're drawing these creatures that are pretty, uh, pretty unique, pretty extreme? Some of them. Uh, yeah, just extreme things. I just want to do extreme things. I just like causing. I like getting a reaction from people, and I've always gravitated towards just the darker things. I did an interview once where I said, you know, all I wanted was all the villains from He-Man. I never cared about any of the heroes. I just yep. wanted, um, you know, I just love the dark stuff. That's just it. <laughs> no, you do it very well. You do it very well. So <laughs> Thanks, man. We've probably got another one or two minutes because uh, keeping in mind you've got that call coming in, Dane. Has anyone got any questions coming up that they wanted to ask Dane, whether about the, the concept art side, the directing side, or even just with, uh, with Mogul as well? Um, Someone's just put in, you must have some pretty crazy dreams. I did, man. I had some crazy dreams last night, man. I dreamt I was eating a white chocolate strawberry ice cream and I could really taste it. And I couldn't believe how great it was. But that was my bizarre dream last night. So, yeah. It's probably turned into <laughs> a movie. It'll turn into a movie, that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one of the things I was going to ask you, Dane, just for anyone that's a concept artist in Hollywood or anyone that wants to get to that level... Because, I mean, if you, if you look at Dane's IMDb, I think the average budget of a film you work on is about $150 million, the average budget that you've yeah, got. Yeah, um, these are big films. Trisanne's actually, she's put a question, what motivates you and your work? Uh, that's a good question, because that's what I was going to actually lead into. What's, what's your advice with motivation? How do you stay motivated? How do you get motivated? Well, David, you know, is, as, as an artist, it is actually... I mean, sometimes you do hit a wall, you know, like it's the same as writing a script, I imagine, when you're being employed to do it. Sometimes you do hit it, you know, and it's, it's kind of tricky to stay motivated. Um, but I, I don't know, man, like, hey, uh, there's usually something in a drawing, even if I hate what I'm doing, even if it's not interesting to me, I, um, I'll find something to get excited about in there, you know, and, uh, you know, Worst case scenario, I, all I need to do is reflect on the fact that I'm doing what I've always wanted to do. I have a dream job and I just have to 
think back on how lucky I am to be doing what I'm doing and uh, I'm just going to tell myself that, you know, every now and then and pinch myself and I, you know, get back into the swing of it pretty quickly. Sometimes I'll just stop doing what I'm doing and just do a drawing for myself and that helps. It'll, it'll uh, lubricate your, you know, what you what you want to do and then go back to doing something. But um, motivation's tricky, you know. Our industry is a, is a thirsty beast and uh, it can get you down, but it is a war of attrition. So, I don't know, just keep going. <laughs> yep. Well, I, we've, got, we've got quite a few great, great questions coming in from the, from the fans. I yep. think we've probably got time for one more, uh, just so yep. you can go, jump on that Warner Brothers call. But let me ask you something. What is your favorite film that you've worked on? And tell us about that process. That's hard to choose, man, because I, I've had a lot of fun, you know, and even the sucky films, there's been things that I just absolutely loved on it. But I mean, it's got to be a close race between Fury Road and Alien Covenant. So I always wanted to work with George. Alien being my favorite film, I always wanted to work with Ridley. So getting to do that is great. But also Fury Road was, I was a, technically I was a sculptor on it, I guess. I was dressing the vehicles and making props. Uh, and so, you know, you're putting together stuff from found objects and the production designer colin gibson he got the academy award for that film too he um just let me off the leash and just let me make whatever i want it was just so long as the flavor was agreed upon it didn't matter and so there was basically like a football field of used cars um abattoir tools and uh glass factory defunct glass factory gear go out there take it and make it into a, a vehicle, dress a vehicle, a motorbike, a car, a character, props. I love that experience. I loved it. I can't wait to do it again. Um, and uh, of course, Alien Covenant, you know, basically I've been drawing Alien since I was 12 years old, probably. And uh, to sit down and just be told, look, you need to do it in the style of Rembrandt or, you know, um, this, this fine art rendering style and do it and then also try to honor H.R. Geiger's original style but do it with chuck or do it with line work it was it was just the crown jewel of that experience I was so nervous going in I, I almost didn't want to do the job I was just so afraid that I was going to stuff it up but um, once I got in and once we got lubricated and was going and uh, it was just me and Matt for, I don't know eight or nine months just Head down, drawing, drawing, drawing. Every time we do a drawing, Ridley would ask for thirty more. <laughs> so we just didn't stop. And, and Ridley, uh, and Ridley, and Ridley's got one of your uh, artworks on his. Uh, he did, yeah. Uh, like, room or his living room? I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure it's in a chateau in Paris, in France. It's his um, editing chateau, is what I heard. Uh, he, I know that he took one of my my drawings. It's it's one of the egg illustrations I did. He goes, I never take anything home, but I'm taking that. And I was like, all right, cool, man. There was, there was a part of me that goes, no, no, that's mine. I want to keep that. And I was like, no, yeah. what are you talking about, man? Just go, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, put it in your house. Yeah. <laughs> Lyrics chimed in really quickly. How do, you, how do you get these jobs? For example, how are you getting suddenly on, you know, Marvel film, Pirates of the Caribbean? How are you actually getting to be working in tentpole films? Uh, these days, it's a lot of uh, reputation. So I... Um, I'm very lucky. Like I managed to get a bit of a reputation in the in the uh, field of, of being able to handle specific things. So I can, um, you know, get a phone call and from you know either some random person or it's a or a production designer or producer that wants to do stuff. But man, I think also I'm I'm a pretty personable person. Like I I get along with whoever I'm working with. I mean, I find. Yo, did I drop out there for a sec? Might have just dropped out. Maybe just about five seconds. Before you were running, running out of phone. Running out of phone batteries. Um, no, I. Um, Very yeah. first, you were saying good reputation. Good reputation helps. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, I, I love what I do, and I have a bit of a reputation for that as well. I just, I, re I really enjoy it, and so um, another thing is location as well. Like a lot of this stuff. I, I wouldn't be attached to if they weren't doing it in our studio here in Sydney. 
But uh, even then, I usually go on to work with the designers on the next job. Like, they'll go on and they'll say, oh, mom, I'm doing this thing over here. And I'll do a bit of work for them, you know. So so, so your advice for, for people getting in is you do a good job to start with and then that yeah. will take you further in, yeah. And, um, and you know, you be a solutions person. Don't be a problems person. Like, there's heaps, of, there's heaps of reasons why you can't do something even a drawing you know there's heaps of reasons why i could say oh but i can't i can't fit it in that perspective i can't use these materials i can't render it like that but that's not what you do you say well i could do it this way you know or i had this idea why don't you try that so yeah just always have solutions and that's, that's a great call be a solutions person yeah 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 well dane it's been fantastic to chat with you on the, the muggle live again where can we find your artwork and where can we find you Look, I'm pretty active on Facebook, or I try to be active on Facebook. Um, and you can just, again, if you Google me, I'm pretty sure it'll come up. But if you go to the um, Dane Howard art page, um, I, I try to talk to everyone there. But then also, I, look, I have an Instagram account, but I got hacked, so I don't use it very often. I have to, I think I have to take it down and open a new one. <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, um, yeah, I don't know, reach out to me. I, ch I try to reply to everyone. It just depends on how much work I have on. Yeah. Well, the, the feedback's been fantastic from the guy. Jess has just given you uh, the, the praise signal. That's a uh, class. Thanks, Jess. And, and basically as well, Dane, on the Mogul platform, really great to have a chat with you. You can find Dane on the Mogul community as well. But uh, we'd love to have you back again to chat. Good luck with your meeting thanks, today. Man. And thank you very thank much. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, thanks so a lot, James. Thanks for having me. Life. Cheers. Thanks, thank you Dave. very much. See you guys later. Bye-bye.